Welcome back. Um, okay, so to start our little Eames desk, what we want to do is first cut out some wood. Now, I used 1 8 inch basswood, and I cheated and did this on my Cricut. However, you could use any thin wood that you could cut with your utility knife. Um, when you go to, uh, to cut this, though, for the top and the underneath of the top, round your edges. Okay, so uh, you could use maybe, um, you could use a balsa wood, but we're going to put a clear nail polish coat on this because when he made this, he wanted the natural grain to show. So I chose the basswood because the grain will look pretty realistic. So when you go to cut these, you've got your 6.4 by three, that's the very top. Underneath the top is six by 2.6 centimeters. You have these, which are the wooden top and bottom to the drawer um, at 1.6 by 2.3. And then the front of the drawer is 1.5 by one centimeter. So you have all those. You've got your uh, six, about six uh, of your toothpicks, some sandpaper. You'll have black paint for this. And then you'll have the clear, as I was saying, for just the, the raw wood. So what you want to do is go ahead and make sure that once you are finished cutting nicely and you are going to want to sand of course on your sides make sure to sand carefully on the top and try to make sure you don't have any little uh, scratches or dents because what will happen is when you put this clear nail polish on here it will show all of the flaws now I mean it's pretty realistic to consider or considering that it your desktop might have a lot of flaws um, but that's just something to keep in mind when it comes to these uh, you want to be the most careful with sanding the one of the short ends Okay, definitely be careful about sanding that. And I'll show you after we glue that you'll want to probably sand again. As far as sanding the top and the bottom, it's not really that important because the top of the drawer will be covered in black paper and the bottom, of course, won't show. So also be very careful to sand this, all of the, the edges nicely and the front nicely. So I'm going to take a little time to to clean these up um, and in the meantime since you're doing some sanding um, I might as well show you actually that you're going to need squared off toothpicks now I just recently <laughs> discovered that Amazon actually sells square toothpicks but they're a little bit more expensive than I'd like to pay for it's like $25 for a box which is kind of ridiculous for a toothpick in my opinion I mean of course you probably get enough to last a lifetime but um, nevertheless the thing is the legs on this are square they're actually hollowed out as well like they are l-shaped okay however um, I could not figure out how to make them out of a metal or how to to fold them so they would be precisely the way that he did, uh, but the squared off toothpicks will work just fine. Uh, I'd just like to offer you this advice. Sometimes they have a squared edge, you know, like one of them because they're not cut perfectly. The thing is, if you've got one like that, once you have a flat edge, just put this down on this sandpaper like this. I found that it holds this a little bit better. And then you can go ahead and you want to sand um, this. And you do want to try to do the very best you can to get the same depth all right, as you sand. Because as you go to do this and paint these and install them, you don't want them to look warped and they will look warped if you don't do the same depth you know for all of the sides so i have two sides that are fairly well sanded and i can keep going around it also helps me if i use this sandpaper to hold this when i need to do the 
other two sides like this because one side is still rounded, so it makes it harder. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Make them about as close to the same size as you possibly can, okay? So after you're done with your sanding and so forth, um, I can show you the painting and go from there. Now that we have our sanding done, a um, couple of tips. So when you sand, by the way, always sand with the green of your wood. That's just a friendly reminder. And then because we're painting these, particularly with the nail polish, you want to make sure that you get all of the little bits of dust. See, there was still dust on there off of the surfaces that are going to be painted because it will show uh, with this project. It's going to show. This isn't as important because it's underneath. Um, these just sides. Check on those a little bit. And then the front. Be careful to get anything off of the drawer front. Okay, so now those are ready to paint. Um, you have already done all of these and just you're going to paint these black uh, like I did. I would suggest you may need to sand in between and put then another coat. Um, as you can see, this is not perfectly sanded, um, so it could use a little bit more to make it nice and square and not make it look warped. Uh, what you do is, uh, you do want a slight sheen, so you don't need to use glossy paint, but you don't want to sand it matte, you want to have a slight sheen. So I will probably sand that a little bit more and then paint that uh, better. So for these, what you do is just go ahead and use your clear nail polish for the top, do the best you can to do a nice even coat. It will kind of look bubbly, but that soaks in, or it should soak in, and then it's not a problem. So just kind of draw this across here as evenly as possible. It will absorb it. You can do two coats if you want to. I think I only did one on my prototype, and I felt like it looked okay. And as you can see, that's bringing out the, the grain nicely. For under here, um, it's the sides are really what's going to show more than anything. But put a nice coat, even coat, so that you can pick it up and you can see that it'll look nice. But this is the part that's important. This part will show. Okay, so this is almost dry. Notice that I did paint along the edges. You want to make sure that you do that. And I concentrated on around the edges of these big pieces because that's really the part that's going to show. The front needs all four sides really nicely done. And you've got that. So once you had all of these nice and painted, the next step for you is to cut these into um, three centimeter pieces. Okay, so you should wind up with six three centimeter pieces. And the next step after that is that you want to take, um, well, I use a toothpick, of course, and take little tiny drops of the black paint and use your ruler and just add some dots at even intervals. Officially, there are 12 dots that would go on here, and those are really difficult to see in this picture, but it's where he actually used um, nuts and bolts to attach the wire. Um, and it doesn't really show that much at all, but it's that little detail that can make it look more realistic. So 
I just took little dots of that, just barely touching it at even intervals here. And I just went through and just did like so. So while you're waiting on those to dry, you can go ahead and just stick this to the bottom. Just whatever glue you want to use is perfectly fine for this. Um, I used a little bit of this. Tacky glue is fine. Whatever you want. And then I do want to try to center this nicely. It's going to make my life easier when I go to put the legs on, if I've done a nice job of this. And that's pretty decent. So that can be drying as well. Um, and so the next step that will happen is we'll go ahead and put together the little drawer. And this requires uh, several steps because it's a combination of the wood and paper. So the first thing that you can do is to just go ahead and glue. I made a huge puddle of glue over here. I'm just gonna use some of that. And you glue, you're gluing the top and the bottom to the top and the bottom of this. So the drawer actually And go like this and then the other side as well and we'll do like so make our lives a little easier I want to attempt, no matter how difficult that may be, I really want to try to keep the glue off the face of this. So if I get some on there, I want to remove it. It's not the end of the world if you get the glue on the front. It just means you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to sand that off and then you'll have to put more clear nail polish on here. So. Try not to do that. It's just an extra step that you'll wind up doing. You could, of course, wait and paint this um, after you put this together. The thing is that you really want these pieces to look separate so that it looks like a drawer. So if you're actually um, painting after you're gluing, you still need to be really careful not to get um, the paint like puddle the paint on this because it won't look like a drawer anymore it'll it just it won't have the look like it could be opened now you could make this to where the door opens but i chose not to add another oh gosh i don't know how long it would take me to do that but you just make a box within a box paper i would use paper in this particular case so i'm trying to keep that glue off the face of this but while that is drying, we can begin cutting the paper. I may still have to sand this, it looks like. It's possible that I still got some glue on the front. We'll see. So let's get that out of the way. So, okay, so for the color, so what I did is I just went to Office Max and I printed out my some squares, some colored squares. Now this one I had I did on matte paper as you can see and this one I did on gloss. I didn't see that it made too much difference in the part that is inked. Now obviously there's going to more, be more sheen for the white side, but what we're going to do is we're going to be cutting panels 
rather, this is a panel. And then these are the black on top. This is white. The other side is red and the back is yellow. What you're going to do then is you're going to cut, um, you want this red one to be, let me see, I can mark this. So these are the, these two are the sides. All right, so the red and the white are the sides. And the sides are 1.1 by 2.3, okay, one of each. Now, the back is the yellow, and the back is 1.5 by 1.6 centimeters. It may be difficult to read this, I just realized, because it's so shiny. The black is the top, so the drawer goes like so, and the black goes up here. And so the black color, uh, needs to be a 1.6 by 2.3. So basically this should be the same size as what you cut for this. And adjustments could be needed for that. Then um, the blue. So the blue, you need to cut two of these. And they are, uh, let me see here, they are 1.4 by 2.2 centimeters. You'll want two because you're going to need them glue, to glue them um, back to back. Um, now, keep in mind, this is how I did this. Um, I, I did not have cardstock that was the right colors, so I just decided to do it this way. You certainly could just, you know, paint, um, you know, some of this could be painted right onto the wood. You know, if you went ahead and made a full box, then you could just paint this. Um, but I just, I don't know, I thought this was fairly easy to do. Um, this would have to be paper no matter what. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's your choice. This is what I decided. Now that you have all your little pieces cut out and your legs should be good to go, you're going to want to take a Sharpie and do the edges. Just touch up the edges of the black. If you did it the way that I did it, then the ink doesn't go all the way through, of course. So just... Um, Tip this back a bit so you don't get some on the face. Go ahead and hit that all the way around because the next step is to begin gluing things to the drawer. Now, I would strongly suggest for some of this that you have a glue that is a little bit flexible. For the paper though, um, cause we'll get ready to, to glue these on. I mean, um, for the paper, you can just use, you know, your favorite, um, tacky glue or whatever it is that you want to use. Um, I used a combination of glues when I did the prototype for this. Um, but I'm just going to use a little tacky glue here and, uh, Spread that on here. Go ahead and attach that black piece. Does not matter actually what order you do these in. I just chose to do that. And this is just going to go and cover that whole area. Be sure to kind of adjust that. Have that all nice. So when you go to do the sides, what you're going to do is you're only gluing, like, it's hollow, so you're just going to glue, uh, let me see, just decide this, okay, so I made this the top, so that means that the white goes here to our left, get this glued down a little better there. 
so I'm going to apply the glue there. And honestly, I should apply glue a little bit along these edges. So what I'm talking about here is, let me get myself some glue on a nice toothpick here. Always fun. So I'm applying here, like so. Get that all nice. And then really what I ought to do is apply just a little bit along here. It's I haven't noticed too much of a problem with gapping, but if we do that, then it should keep it from gapping, and I'll show you what I mean. So I want it to fit in between these pieces of wood. So as I do that, kind of press in and adjust. And the gapping I'm talking about would be between, I'll show you here in a minute. Let me get this adjusted properly so I can show you that. So the gapping we want to avoid is like what I have right here. So I'll adjust that and anything that sticks out like this sticks out a bit and I'm going to want to move that up a bit. So anyway, that's the, the white. I'm going to do the same idea um, with the red on the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Then when I get to the back, I just have my yellow piece and I will adhere my yellow piece, which I was noticing that the measurement was a little off. And I think it's because every time you glue these together, it's slightly different. So see, I have, gosh, I don't know what that is, maybe maybe a millimeter off that I'm going to need to adjust my yellow. Um, and I don't, yeah, I'm going to want to adjust my yellow a little bit. It doesn't really matter if it covers both sides, but yeah, my measurements, I apologize. You're going to need to adjust your measurements according to how yours turned out. And I'm going to actually put it on the inside. That's not how the back looks, but I think it's going to look better if I do that for the model. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then we the, the next thing that is going to happen is you're going to check to make sure that your legs are exactly, well, as close as possible to exactly the three centimeters. So you want to take a nail file or something like that, put it up against the line on your board, then come in on this side and push those in and see how even they are. I could use a little bit of sanding on this side, not too bad though, it's not too bad. I want to try to make them as easy, you know, as close as possible. Now, when I go to glue them, there's some wiggle room, but I don't want to have to do a significant amount of sanding after I apply these to the table because it, then it, it can break and really become a pain. So, so now we're ready to go. We've got everything on there. And we want to go ahead and take our first piece of metal. All right, this is an important detail, a couple of important details. One is, I actually like this one better. One is that when you go to glue these legs, you want to try to adhere it somewhat to the side, not in other words, not to the front of this like so, 
but slightly to the side, which means it's mostly going to be sticking to the paper and the edge of the wood. And the reason for that is these uh, measurements that I have are, are really, really close. And th they have to be. There's, it's just the way that it goes. There's only so much room for this. It's just every little millimeter made a difference when I put this together. So in order to make sure that this fits well in here, you know, you'll notice that there's just very little wiggle room. So try to put it on the sides. And then when we go over here, this panel should be fine as well if we um, will glue these to the sides as well. So, um, so basically, this is where I'm talking about this kind of glue that has a little bit of, of flexibility to it. Um, I highly recommend it. And you're going to go ahead and put that very carefully here on the edge. And as always, try to keep them, um, I'm trying to find the most, the ones that I'm the most happy with here. They're all a little different. As I adhere this, I am going to check once I kind of get this here. I want to make sure that I have two millimeters from the bottom all the way around this. And so I have too much right now. I'm gonna go ahead and place this face down. And I can adjust. I want from the bottom two millimeters. So that has to adjust pretty significantly. I want to cover that paper, but also keep this on the side. So you'll see that's gonna it's gonna take a little finagling to get that perfect. And that is almost exactly the two millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my adjustments. I'm gonna go ahead and glue all the way around on this. Then what we'll do is we'll just take these two and glue them back to back. And, um, well, we might. We might. Let's see. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and glue those back to back. And these are the easy ones because all you have to do is glue the sides once this is um, double thickness super easy to do this part. The drawer is going to take you a little time. But this, this is just nothing at all. So we'll do that and we'll take a um, couple of these and we're really, you know, we're just taking this and we're just going to, well, we'll wait for that to dry, won't we? And we're just going to go ahead and stick it up at the top. It'll be right up here. Nicely up at the top. Try to get that even across. So when I go to, to glue this one, I may want to take my emery board or something else and make sure that it is even across there and press that in. So I will do that. So I'm going to put these on and then I will do those. Now that you have these glued on and this, you can go ahead and stick it to the top. And um, I made it to where the drawers on the right hand side, but you can put it on the left hand side, totally doesn't matter. Uh, since I want it on the right hand side, I want to glue it this way. And then um, I did use this glue, so I see that there will need to be some adjustments a little bit to get this to fit. I want it, if you're able to see, you know, I want these feet, these legs rather, to fit right on the edge and in the corner. So right on the edge and the corner on both. And then it'll be 
exactly where it needs to be. Hopefully this is nice and, and level. If not, you might find that you're gonna to have to do a little bit of sanding and a little bit of adjusting. Um, but I'll go ahead and glue these on. And then the last step for the last few things that you have to do would all be um, cutting of wires and adhering the wires and the handle. Okay, so when I come back, that's what we'll get ready to do. So once you have this little guy all glued together, glued on, you just have all these little wires. So I decided to just go ahead and kind of put them out on this picture. This is, my printer has issues, but basically you want about 3.8 centimeters for this part, the back. There's these little supports or struts, I suppose, a centimeter, centimeter a piece. This arrow is trying to point to the back of this square and that's 1.5, then you need six of these guys because they're gonna go here, inside, okay, two, four, out here as well, six. So those measurements might have to be altered a little bit depending upon you know how this turned out. Um, you know, this can be uh, used this glue because then this can be kind of adjusted and wiggled a little bit in order to make the wires go in there straight. But also, you know, nothing is perfect when you go to glue this together. I just made that wobbly. Um, nothing is perfect when you go to do that. So you may have to adjust this a little bit. As for this pull, what you do is you take off more um, wire than you need. And by the way, I don't know what gauge wire this is. I've lost the packaging, so I'm not actually sure what that is, unfortunately. What I did for the handle is I took more than I needed, and I went ahead and I put it about up to here, like so. And then I just bent both sides like this. And I looked at it to see if it was the size that I wanted based on that. And I just kept adjusting that way instead of trying to measure and do this really big. So like that is not too bad. It's a little bit big, but that's how I did it instead of cutting it and then trying to bend things around and, and do that real small. I just used more than I needed. And then I, when I was ready, I just cut like that. This is obviously not good, but then I just cut right across and it was even. Okay, once you get your wires on here, um, you're finished. Don't forget your little drawer pull and you get everything adjusted. Sometimes those wires, I noticed, um, I think I warned you, you know, the measurements on the wires might have to be adjusted because it's not perfectly square, I found. Like mine's leaning, I think, a little bit. It sits flat, but it's, nevertheless, you might have to adjust your wires a little bit. I need to clean up with some of this glue. Um, but when you're finished, you've got our little Eames desk. I hope you had fun doing it and thanks for watching and please subscribe.